Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. We are excited to be jumping back on the podcast. These are my favorite conversations and more on the serious note. But for those that are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Alfredo Briones, and this is Britsy, my wife. So Hello. welcome to A and B. Yes, welcome. We do different kinds of videos, but as you know, the foundation of this channel is always based on special need children. We are right. our mission and our goal is to advocate and just bring awareness yes. to the disability community. Yes. So course. in today's video, I'm just jump straight in. Uh, we're gonna encourage you guys and uh, you know things that we learn and things that we didn't learn until after and. Right. I mean, you never really prepared for the NICU, no. so you either search for this video or you have been following us for quite some time now. And so we're just going to jump straight into the video and just give you all some insight of what to expect in the NICU and just some things that, again, you're never prepared for these things, right. but some things that we learned in the process and in the journey. In the journey. Right. Yeah. So first and foremost, I would love to say to this to the parent that's out there, it is not your fault. If your baby mm -hmm. is currently in the NICU or was in the NICU, they should start off with, it's nothing you did or it's not didn't your fault. do. It is not your fault. Sometimes things happen and a NICU stay is necessary. We were in the NICU for 10 months, almost a full year. I know it's crazy. It's a very long time to be in the NICU, but definitely know the full depths, every corner, every crevice of the hospital life because it was definitely our second home mm -hmm. for the past three years and like i was saying it is not your fault as a parent we always blame ourselves i i know i i personally blame myself a lot until this day i still have those intrusive thoughts of i shoulda the wouldas yes. the couldas and why didn't it go this way mm -hmm. is god mad at me yeah oh yeah that's a very good one and i i also question myself why is god punishing me and am I, does God not love me? Why didn't he, I know he could heal my baby. If there was a problem gestational wise, couldn't he heal the baby then? And you know, just those dark thoughts, just being honest out there, those are real thoughts. And One of our favorite nurses told us the journey just begun. And, mm -hmm. and it's really that. And it's not a, this video is not a one size fits all because right. everyone has a different story. Yeah, that's um, right. You know, we did an encounter an intensive journey. Right. And for some, it might just be a week. It might just be a few days. Right. Couple it might be months. a year. It might be longer. Extensive. I yeah. mean, but regardless of how long it was or how in depth it was, how severe it was, it's still very difficult in whatever level that may be to you. So, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. Yes, definitely do not blame yourself and don't be hard on yourself. And I know those thoughts will come and just... And be honest with yourself. Yes, be honest and talk to your partner, your significant other, your family, and it's not your fault. The second part is the most obvious thing and it's super overwhelming, but you're going to notice a lot of alarms, monitors, and equipment. So you're going to ask yourself, what in the world is this? What's on my baby's foot? Yes. What is... What is all these things connected to him, yes. her? There is definitely a lot of equipment from ventilators to pulse oximeters to the monitor that um, monitors your baby's saturations and heartbeat and all of that. And there's, first and foremost, if your baby is very small, like ours was, he was 26 weeks when he was born, so he was tiny you he's guys. a micro preemie he's micro preemie he weighed one pound so they he or she you will expect the baby to be in a incubator which you know keeps them warm and kind of mimics the mother's womb right and so that's the main thing you're going to see you know walking into your child's room it's a very small room and you're gonna see definitely whether it is a little triggering but a breathing tube or a nasal cannula that is helping your baby breathe. Yes. In our case, it was a breathing tube because he had very premature and he had very sick lungs when mm -hmm. he was born because, you know, he's underdeveloped and all that. So besides the people you're going to meet, you're going to meet, you know, the, the doctors who are 
they're constantly taking care of your baby and coming up with your child's care and the nurses there's nurse practitioners and of course the chaplains yep. who help you hr is the heart rate which is usually green yes but i was just looking at here just to make yeah. sure i had that correct and the spo is the, the oxygen the oxygen the saturations which is usually blue which is usually like right. a light blue and then the, the respiratory, respiratory rate, rate is how many breaths your baby te- takes, takes in a minute in a minute you also see there should be a blood pressure cuff and it is the smallest little thing yeah. on there so definitely don't be afraid to ask any questions i know a lot of times me and alfredo were like oh this might be a dumb question but it's not you just genuinely don't know and you want to learn there's no such thing as a dumb question yes there's so not. don't be afraid to ask yes i would definitely advise to just ask whatever what does this mean what color does this represent mm-hmm. And your baby more than likely will have an IV. Mm-hmm. And right beside their bed is going to be a IV pump, whether it's one or 10. At one point, we were at almost 20 constant IV drips going into our baby. But don't be alarmed. It is just to help them and all that. Every question you have, write it down. I know they always tell you write it down, but really write it down. It yeah. works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and just to give them a idea or a preparation you as a mother when you walked into the NICU what was that first feeling you had when you were you know on the wheelchair getting to your baby what was those first thoughts that were coming in just to encourage those right. mothers that are literally on their way there or about to I mean to be honest I felt a little um naive I didn't realize how fragile and how vulnerable Abel was until I saw him. And I was still so innocent about the journey, you know, which is okay because you're new to it. But I just felt a sudden like overwhelmness in the beginning because, oh my gosh, I have to learn all these terms. I have to really research what this means. Where am I going from here? Will he need this um, procedure done and all that? Like and not only am I required to be a parent but i'm also required to be a an advocate an advocate a nurse a a doctor a caregiver right and all the above i mean it's your first baby so let alone a lot of changes are going on your body as a mother whether it's your first time breastfeeding you're trying to figure that out or pumping in my case because i couldn't breastfeed able so figuring all that out it's very overwhelming and if i could give anybody advice it's just to connect really well with the nurses yeah almost make them your family in our case we we connected with them very well on a level of they are still our friends to this day right and even the doctors so i would just get to know them not personally of course but just on your child's care level and just be honest as you can and say i feel scared just tell them like i feel worried i don't know if this is normal can you check this again on my child and all that so everything's so new it is. and fresh so i think one more thing i wanted to add before we move on to the next one was i, I know you were overwhelmed with the thought that you could not breastfeed you were so stressed out that you literally couldn't breastfeed because you were mm-hmm. stressed and oh, yeah. and it got the best of you when your own our own baby had to have breast milk from someone else because you're right. like why I can't even do that for my own child. So I guess that ties in with not beating yourself up about their will. If if you do, or I get you talk more about that because I'm not a mother. And we're going to talk about mental health a little bit down down the road in this video. But, um, you know, in the NICU, the doctors say um, your breast milk is the best nutrition that your baby could have to get stronger, you know, to get those all those antibodies. So in my case, it's hard because I couldn't do skin to skin and have that bond with Abel right away to help create that milk, you know? And I believe I only had a supply of milk for maybe a month or two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but it wasn't enough to where I wanted to keep giving it to Abel so he could keep growing, keep getting better, his lungs get better and all that. So I beat myself a lot about that. I'm like, if only I had breastfed him more, if only I would have gotten more milk. 
had I had that bond with him, had I done skin to skin earlier. Had he became stronger or yes. more healthier. Yes, definitely. So these thoughts are, they're going to run in your mind. Yes, and they're real and it's okay. And don't hide from them and don't. And don't keep them in there. Let yes. them expose those thoughts with, with people you trust because they will get the best of you, I promise. They definitely if will. If you let them in. Mm hmm yeah. But uh, the next one, you have all the, you have, you came prepared. I don't have anything. <laughs> I came ready. Yeah, so the next thing is unexpected health issues that your preemie may Yes. have and may encounter so the NICU is definitely a roller coaster and there's no joke the nurse told us that it's definitely a roller coaster I had no idea what she meant when she said that until we were going we were definitely riding the roller coaster which means you will definitely have really good days amazing days where you think yes the day's coming soon we're gonna go home she's growing he's growing um, he accomplished this milestone, and then two days later, a day later, it's a very difficult day, and it's a scary day. Things There go, will be setbacks. Yes, there will be setbacks. You will go five steps forward, three steps back, and that's totally normal. And you'll see, and because you're, you know, we have to keep in mind, preemies are so fragile. Is that the, I don't like using that word. They're um, so delicate. Yes, delicate. That... Their lungs are literally developing outside of the womb. That's so difficult for anybody to, mm -hmm. I mean, there's scar tissues and things that are happening in the lungs that, I mean, it, it's a lot going on. Yes. So don't be surprised if, you know, the doctor mentions, hey, we are on less oxygen today. The FiO2s is less or the SATs have been really great and... Now we've gotten him down to a CPAP or a, or a bubble, bubble cannula. cannula. Yeah. All these terms. Don't be surprised if you see improvement and then you see... And the breathing it, tube again. At the breathing tube again. If, yeah. if you see that happening because the lungs are just... Yes, they're coming back and forth. Back and, and forth, back and forth and fighting. and So celebrate those milestones. Yes. And be okay with that setback. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard. It really is because in our case... Um, you have no control. You don't. And that's very hard Cause as like, a parent. I can't do nothing. You're telling, you're telling me I can't do nothing with my child. Right. But just watch them and watch him fight through this. Yeah. No, so. it's, it's really hard and it's, it's a very hard mind battle. But um, in our case... Abel went on and off the breathing tube several times and triggering at one point coded mm -hmm. when everything seemed to be good and he was still a tiny, tiny baby and things seemed to be going in the right direction. And next thing you know, we're heading towards Atlanta to Children's Hospital yep. of Atlanta to, so they could take over his care. And if you happen to reach that place, which we pray for, we pray that for those that are watching are not in a similar case to us because our situation was a lot more severe because of all the comp complexities that Abel did develop throughout his prematurity. We're, we're hoping this is, you're just there for a week, a few days. Mm -hmm. But if you do reach a point that there is a code blue, you're never prepared for those. So the very first time we encountered that, we just froze, like, don't know what to do. And usually the nurses will say to leave the room mm -hmm. for your own peace. It depends where you're at mentally. Yeah. But regardless, if you step out or stay in there and, and choose to, you know, pray in that room while the nurses and doctors are doing everything they need to do, regardless of what decision you take, I chose to stay in there. Was it traumatizing? Yes. But if you choose to stay out, that doesn't mean you're not fighting with your child. Like, Ooh, do not good. beat yourself up for that as well. Wow. That's very good. Yeah. Well, it just touched me a little bit. Because there was times I couldn't stay in that room. Because Abel did code so many times that we almost became, I don't even want to use the word experts, into like what to do in those situations. But of course, if no one's in the room, run out call somebody hit it don't the, matter how loud button. you or like hit the button whatever you need to do just call somebody 
every situation is different, but that's just my two cents. What's the next thing? Well, um, yes. Well, I was really hung up on that. But the next one is definitely, you will see this every day in the NICU, is daily rounds. Which, in other words, is daily rounds is when the doctors, every morning they come into your child's room or either outside, because obviously they're babies, so they won't hear all that. But when they discuss your child's care and what they have in plan for the day or the following Yeah, just pretty much the day because they're daily rounds. And I would definitely advise you to be a part of daily rounds with your doctors. And of course, they will tell you that coming into the NICU and usually every day they will ask you if you would like to join the daily rounds. And at first it sounds like a bunch of like just another language because, you know, they're saying um, patient so-and-so, this happened, this occurred, Brady's and all that. But you will eventually be fluent in their language and the medical language like we were we were a part of Abel's everyday rounds we would go back and forth sometimes it would get heated not too heated but we would definitely advocate and I was a Karen in the hospital yes and it's okay to be a Karen you guys it's in the your hospital child. especially yes it is just your child and you have to be on top of those doctors because sometimes you do have to check them and make sure they're they're, they of course are doing their best they have great intentions they do but they're human you know they may forget something or they may give less of something or too much of something but this goes back to keeping journals and we kept we kept two journals alfredo has my composition and i we had one in abel's nikki room when he was a baby one thing that's very useful when it comes to rounds because it is a lot of information is to keep a journal write everything down yes write everything down on a sticky note or if you guys don't know already i actually launched my journals i have a few designs already so if you haven't checked that out i have the special needs planner as well but if you haven't checked that out just go on ablestore.co to follow all that but i definitely advise you to be a part of daily rounds so you can know exactly what the doctors are doing for the day for your child yes and one sticky note in some days it may seem frivolous as if like okay you guys talked about that yesterday Mm -hmm. or two days in a row we're talking about the same thing but uh, there's no improvement right and sometimes it do be like that yeah there's not gonna be there's gonna be slow days but yeah and then those slow days they can be very long i hated those days slow days are very long but personally to us me and alfredo would always say i'd rather have a boring day at the hospital than an eventful day because those eventful so days can be scary definitely a boring day in the hospital is a good day is a good day <laughs> if you know what i mean for those that been in the hospital in and out yes at some point of the beginning of the NICU journey if your baby is in a very intensive state you'll be asking yourself when do i get to hold my baby so for me personally, I didn't hold him until a month. Yeah, it was a, a month or so. Him, after his birth. And Alfredo had to wait a little longer. It was two months for you. Because they usually let the mother carry first, of course. And so you will, that day will come. And for others, it will be shorter. Maybe the day of or the next day. You know, just depending on your child's status of their health. And the one thing I didn't know walking into it touching preemies to them it's very stressful because they're like what's going on i'm still supposed to be in the womb what's all this touching what's all this bright lights and usually they keep they keep the like the room dark but um i didn't know i we could barely touch him too but we couldn't rub or anything because that causes stress we could just put our hands on him and that's it those few that first month but when the day came, we did this thing, what's called kangaroo care. Funny name, but basically it's skin to skin. You, they will put the baby right on your chest. So the day usually plays out of you got to come in your comfortable clothes because you're going to be holding your baby for ma- minimum an hour. An hour, yeah. All you have to do is sit down and the nurses, the respiratory therapist will be in there. A doctor maybe just in case. And... They will carry your baby for you and place them on your chest. And in my case, I held Abel with a breathing tube. And 
with IDs, just everything attached to him. I mean, more than 20 cables, I believe. But they do everything for you. They accommodate you very well. And just one thing, I was very afraid to hold him. And I, w- I almost didn't want to do it. Because, which is normal. Yes, which is normal if you have those feelings. I almost didn't want to because I was scared I was going to hurt him because, you know, he seemed very delicate and small. But I'm very glad that I pushed myself to do so because it's actually very crucial for a baby's health. So I didn't know that. I mean, obviously I'm a first-time mom, you know, let alone in the NICU. But right when – it's crazy how much skin to skin to skincare does for the baby and for yourself too so Abel was having a hard day that day with his breathing and right when they laid him on me we spent a little time together his oxygen went up which is a good thing his saturations went up to 100 yeah and they're like wow mom he feels you like he knows you're his mom and that touch sorry I'm gonna cry <laughs> okay stop it's a mother's touch Something special for sure. Oh. <laughs> but. Didn't mean to get emo. It's okay. That in itself is its own healing. Yeah. It sure is. A lot of healing. Another note, it is scientifically proven that skin to skin improves a preemie's health. And let alone your breastfeeding too. If you're a mother who is breastfeeding, it helps with your milk supply and it helps with the baby's vitals. So scientifically proven whoa yes okay so almost the last tip we're going to talk about your mental health super important and stress care because your stress will be at a thousand real quick and it's very your mental health will and can deteriorate really fast like that first day probably was what what are we in like this journey is going to be very long i don't know how long i don't know the hours we're going to spend in here i don't know this all these medical things that was our first question how long are we going to be here Mm-hmm. and they're like don't know every baby's different and that's very true that's very true so the first thing i can say about your mental health is to is to talk to whether it is a close friend, a close family member. Someone you truly trust. Trust. And is there to listen. Yes. And hear you and not try to... Understand you. Yeah. Because it's not about understanding you guys. It's just about listening and being a good friend. And if you know someone who's in the NICU, if you have a friend who's in the NICU, please be there for them and do not leave them. Because it is probably the most stressful and traumatic time in their lives ever or you could also in our case we grew very close to a friend that was two doors down in the NICU the Burley family and we are still friends with them today thank god you know they're they're such a gift in our lives but whether it is a NICU support group because of course no one will understand you like other people who are in the NICU Mm -hmm. or part of the hospital life is to really join a NICU support group Find a supportive church as well, a church that supports you and that is there with you. And honestly, for me, where I found peace is in prayer. Just pray. Pray your pain out. Pray every moment. Just just pray. Yeah. And I know it's super, it's easier said than done because there are some days I did not feel like praying. There were some days where I was like, God, you're not even doing anything. Why am I still? Why? I'm here praying for my child, but you have all these other children that just got here and already getting to go home. I've been here for mm-hmm. three months. I've been here for five months. I've been here, and the time kept going and going. And, yeah. And it just messed with your mind, and your mind was just dark. Like Yes, it can get very dark very fast. So. And I would definitely say to pay attention to your own needs. You know, if you just feel overwhelmed, it's okay to step back and take a walk. Yes. Read a book. And there was a lot of times where Alfredo and I literally had to not come for a whole day to the NICU or two days or a weekend. We had, we spent the weekend away and we were like, I just need to de-stress and just kind of find myself again and 
ground myself because it's a lot. You need that. The NICU is very overwhelming and, and very hard. For sure. It's very hard weight to carry. And, and it's, some, Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I cut you off. And I just want you to know that it's okay to step away. Yes. It's okay to step away for a few hours, for a day, Even for a weekend. Even if it's just weekend. for lunch. If you had to step away for a week, it's we did okay. That. We did. Because it's all consuming. You could find yourself very consumed into the the darkness of it. And some hospitals are different. Uh, I know for sure Atlanta Children's Hospital is completely different than our local hospital. As far as visitation goes, so for example, they might have you make a list of the top Oh, that's right. Three, five people, I don't remember. Was it three or five? I think it was just three. It was three. Like, besides us, besides five me. in total, three other people. Yes. So you might have to make that list. Some people might take it personal because you didn't put them on the list. Some people will support you. Just make sure you have a good, strong support system yes. within that. In Children's Hospital, they allow different visitors to come. So just make sure they're germs. Be mindful of what you allow into your child's room because mm-hmm. germs is, I mean, I know with COVID has been a thing since 2020, the beginning of 2020 or 2019 or whenever it escalated but in the NICU world COVID's always that whole uh style lifestyle of germs washing your, washing hands. your hands that that's a thing that's been a wearing thing wearing a mask that's definitely always been a thing wearing gloves NICU. yes so all these things take for consideration be mindful of what you take in and mm-hmm. please wash your hands yes scrub 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 them nails oh yeah I know Scrubbing. it sometimes can get annoying when you would step out the room just to go get something at your car or in your car or at the cafeteria. And then you <laughs> have to or, or let's say you went to the elevator and you ran back because you forgot something. Wash them again. Wash them again. Always. I know it's annoying. It's crucial. But just wash them. Yes. And it's very important that you take care of yourself because that is when you will be able to best take care of your child and you know just be on top of everything with the doctors and with your whole medical team so absolutely please get rest what are some things that parents should bring into the NICU or avoid bringing or yeah like what yeah that's a great question because I was clueless and I definitely had to learn throughout our hospital stays afterwards but um you know there's in the NICU, there's really nothing that you can bring into the NICU that will help your child any better because, truthfully, the hospital provides everything to uh, a weighted glove, a weighted octopus with tentacles. Those are so cute. But um, Yeah, ask for those. Yes, a weighted octopus. octopus or whatever animal that may be. But yeah. that helps your child with comfort. Yes, it does. I would definitely, though, advise... You know, give you the advice to bring a journal. I would say two, because in our case, we had a, a journal that would stay in Abel's room, which is mostly for his milestones. So I would tell the nurses or doctors if they wanted to, to write down Abel's accomplishments for the Daily. day. Or if he had a bad day, I would love for them to write it down. And we still have that journal today. And it's so nice to look back at those memories. And they would just... You know, nurses get so creative. They yeah, imprint their foot. Yeah, they, they imprint their foot on the paper and they're like, oh, um, I was this many days old today. And it's like the tiniest footprint. And then they'll just do it throughout the journey. Yes. And it's so good to look up on. So that journal is definitely to stay in your child's room for milestones and regressions, whatever it may be. And I would definitely say a journal for mom and dad to mainly keep track of... Um, all the monitoring that's going on, the medications, the respiratory medications, the therapy sometimes might come in, you know, and do their stuff. And just any procedures that may happen when you go into daily rounds, you have a place to write down everything. And so it's not all up here. Your head will get foggy and you will get really stressed out. So it's very good to just brain dump into something physical. So And monitor your... Your mental, mental as well. Yes. Monitor that. Write that stuff down. Yes. And another thing, a planner. 
I now have created my own special needs planner. Yes. And it has everything you could possibly think of in there to help you with your special needs. The child. depths of the depths. Yes. Yeah, so I would definitely check that out. I have journals and a special needs planner and a regular planner for any of you who love to write things down and who are stationary lovers. So please check that out at ablestore.co. We'll put it right here. Yes. So last but not least, I just wanted, speaking of journals, I wanted to read one thing to you because I wrote this last year and I'm very specific of like the time. Dates are super prophetic and the the times that it was written and stuff like that. I could read some page and remember what I was feeling that day just by reading this. And the time, huh? I want to read something to you to finalize this video. Okay. And... I think it's time for you to hear this because I was reading this earlier and I was like, wow, I wrote this last year and I was at a dark place last year. Um, Of course, for those that don't know, Abel passed away last year, our son, our only son, Abel. Uh, So our purpose now is to help others in the disability community and just be a voice. So yeah, let me read this to you. It says, Abel is coming back into your womb, Britsy, but you will experience your pregnancy completely different. Full term, full term favor over your health. Mm. Abel is coming back into your arms. The sound of your newborn will be so prophetic. It will be a heavenly sound. Hold on to it. It will all make sense next year. Keep trusting. New home. We didn't even have a home then. <laughs> that is crazy. New, new Abel. <laughs> new territory fresh breath in abel's lungs and then there was one more thing i wanted to read to you it says transfer is i have third grade handwriting so i'm having a hard time reading this especially when i'm angry i write so <laughs> i make those are usually the best and this is the best journal yeah entries transfer is coming into your hands keep your hands open i'm making a profit out of you Everything that was uncurable is being transmitted into radical healing. Generational curses and identity issues are being loosened. Freedom to your mind. I'm helping you walk from guilt into grace. Healing in your mind. Let me heal you. Let me touch you. I'm walking into your room tonight. I'm replacing emptiness into hunger. Wow. I'm replacing emptiness into hunger. New levels, new transfers. It's happening now. It's time to rise. I'm replacing your brokenness into crushing. There's a difference between being broken and crushed. When something breaks, it breaks. When it's crushed, it turns into something. Something in in your life. Damn, I can't read this. I will be so evident in your life. You have already been equipped and chosen. There is a new birth in your belly. This, yeah, basically that. And just new season of elevation. Wow. You are going to speak to thousands and you will still be judged. Mm. But just trust in me. Anointing over your life. Keep speaking. Keep being active. The battle has already has made you stronger. Yeah, just that. Just know that you're healed. Your womb is... There will be healthy babies in that womb. And everything that we went through... In order to find great peace, we had to go through great pain. So... Hey, man. I ever see that. Just wanted to read that to you because that was a year ago. But That's crazy. Yeah. You're healthy. Stop overthinking it. Mm. Okay, yeah, so that's it for today's video, you guys. And I hope you found some encouragement, some answers maybe, some guidance. And we love to do these videos and we really love to educate y'all based off our experiences. Yes, if you guys have any specific conversations that you guys want us to have on this podcast, please comment below. We would love to make that happen. So yeah, don't hesitate please comment below and like this video so thank y'all so much for watching we love y'all and we will see y'all next time yes bye you guys bye